You're do everything you're doing is opposite of what you're actually saying you're doing. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Compter Thoughts. My name is Richard, and Ed Litton, our esteemed president of the SBC, is in the news again. Coming up next. Right here. Hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Um, yeah, Edward Litton, Doctor Reverend Honorable Ed Litton, uh, the man who was plagued by scandal by his own doing over the summer, uh, kind of has admitted to it, sort of ish, but not quite really. <clears throat> been very quiet since much of the scandal. He's been on a few podcasts to try and justify himself and. He was at Southwestern Seminary and basically telling people who, if they got caught plagiarizing in a seminary, would be kicked out of the seminary. And he's like, yeah, you know, my memory is so good that I just accidentally plagiarized. It's just, it's not good. His whole situation is not good. And it's hard because, like, I want, I, I like Ed Litton. Like, I, he just seems like such a nice guy. But again, as I said... In another video, uh, critiquing Isaiah Saldivar, that he's talking about this and this and this very charismatic guy, young guy, uh, great following on YouTube. Okay, but it's all about charismatic stuff, not the Bible, right? It's not Scripture. Now, they, everybody, every Christian is going to say, "Oh, I love the Bible," but so often do we not actually have that as our standard, but rather something else. In this case, the charismatics. It's always the experiences, the tongues, the wonders, the signs. Blah 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 blah. Ed Litton is not going to seek re-election, which is a good thing, ultimately. It's a good thing. It's a good thing for him. It's a good thing for the convention. Now, it's not because he's plagued by scandal. It's just because he's going to focus on racial reconciliation, supposedly. Now, I don't know how much reconciliation we need to get to. Uh, this is something that's kind of this hamster wheel of works. And it's like, no, 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 it's a gospel thing. It's a, it's a result of the gospel, blah, 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 blah. I would kind of agree with that in one sense, but the problem with it is that there isn't ever any end in, end in sight. There's no like, okay, so if this, then this. If we get, you know, 50% representation, then we're reconciled. If so-and-so, if this thing. And it's like, I mean, Fred Luter is the only uh, black or melanated plus man to be the president of the SBC. That happened about 10 years ago. Okay, great, yeah. It was four years after Obama was elected, who's only, you know, half African, half Kansan or European, whatever you want to call it. His mom was white, quote-unquote. His dad was black, quote-unquote, black African. <clears throat> Let's not forget South Africa, and there's plenty of Africans who don't have dark skin at all. But, you know, that's neither, neither here nor there. These distinctions we make, the world makes them. But the church, I don't know why we still do this, honestly. Because there is no racial whatever. First of all, there's one race, right? There's only one race. And for us to continue with this rhetoric is just dumb. It's just dumb because... You're not being clear. Oh, it's a gospel with this. Oh, we want to be unified. <clears throat> but you're not. You don't want to be unified. Why? I'm telling you this because of how your actions are. You might feel it in you know the burning in your bosom like the Mormons do when they experience Joseph Smith, but not when you have your actions, right? If I, if I say, I love my wife so much, I love my family so much, and I'm never home, I'm never pulling my own weight, I'm not making a living, I'm not being kind, I'm not, you know, randomly hugging my wife or kissing her or, or, or you know, tossing my children around or reading a book with them, I'm always ignoring them. Oh, but I love my family. What is, what is louder there, actions or words? Well, of course, actions. Actions are always, as the phrase goes, speaks louder than words. And we know this full well with politicians. And quite frankly, most of these SBC guys, and just really any denomination, but I'm in the SBC, so it's my wheelhouse, is the elites, these people, these power brokers at the top, just like they were in the New Testament, though they're not as corrupt as those guys, the Sanhedrin in particular, 
Their actions are just politicians. Oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. I, I you know, I, I didn't inhale. Uh, no, I did. I don't, I don't know that woman, Miss Lewinsky. No, I don't. You know, I wasn't. Oh, I didn't do that. I mean, we see this with the COVID mandates and nonsense. Oh, I wasn't breathing. <laughs> you know, whatever. And it's just like, the elites act like this, and all of us, everybody else, the you know, 99% of us look at them like, can you have any conviction, please? Can you just admit when you're wrong? Aren't you a Christian? Like, the world's going to do what the world's going to do. Like, Obama, right, Clinton, Bush, whatever, Trump, these people are going to do what they're going to do. Okay, they're not going to care. But when you're a Christian, and you steal sermons, and you lie about it, just own up, dude. We have brains. We know what you're saying. Anyway. Thankfully, Ed Litton is not seeking res um, um, renewal. What is it? Re-election. There it is. There it is. It's a two-year thing, generally. Usually, the, the guy gets in, and then there's a second-year kind of customary thing. Uh, kind of like how we do every four years, but you actually have to win. <laughs> That's debatable these days. Um, depending on your voting machines. But they usually just kind of usher the guy in. He's not seeking re-election. Re He's only been president less than one year, which is good. The other guy who's going to replace him or try to replace him, I don't know much about him. He's probably not much better. I was texting somebody else, and he was like, yeah, he's not much better. Okay. Well, at least Ed Litton's not in at the helm, I guess. But he also did a thing, and I'm hoping to do a panel similar to the ERLC uh, with several of my Melanated Plus friends and talk about their discussion. Because the ERLC, if you don't know it, again, the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission, this is where Russell Moore was for a long time, and then he kind of, you know, doused it with gasoline and lit it on fire as he walked out, double birding everybody. Uh, of course, you know, it was a pious way, and talking about the executive committee scandal and holding on to evidence for 20 months, and, you know, just in a very pious sort of Russell Moore type way. He's fallen from grace, but anyway, that's another video. This is the same ERLC. Now, there's a different guy leading it. I've never heard of this guy. don't know anything about this guy. Uh, looks like he's maybe my age, maybe younger. He has three people on, three people, four people on. Ed Lyndon, the president. Fred Luter, former president, but he's not elected, nothing like that. And then two other people, a lady and a guy. And talking about racial reconciliation and this and this and this and it's like so much of the stuff they said is literally the opposite of what they're doing i mean they're like standard politicians in particular democrats who call people racist who do this and that who do all these things and and we care about the poor and it's like you're doing everything you're doing is opposite of what you're actually saying you're doing it's called gaslighting in the sense it's partial gaslighting and that, that comes from an old movie from the 40s where basically people are doing one thing and they're convincing you and telling you, conditioning you, that they're not. The leftists, whether they're political or otherwise, are doing this too. There's plenty of leftists in the SBC and just in denomination and the church in general. They don't say they're left, but neither did the leftists 40 years ago. They said there were moderates. People who are moderate, who don't believe in the resurrection, these people from 40, 50 years ago, they don't believe in the resurrection, don't believe in the virgin birth, don't believe that God uh, can even supernaturally create, don't believe in a recent creation, but rather materialistic evolution mixed with the Bible. They don't believe in any of this stuff. And they were the quote unquote moderates. It's the same thing today. Oh, I believe the Bible. The Bible is sufficient for everything, for, you know, pertaining to life and godliness, except for we still need this, you know analytical tool. We still need these things. You still need to read these types of authors. You still need to have this. You need to check your privilege. We need to have other people at the table. We need to have people of color over here. We need to have people in leadership over here. We need to have more positions, blah, 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 blah. The only, speaking of all that, we'll get to the whole trouble here. The only thing I even will believe from anyone who talks like that, which is, that's critical theory at its finest. A lot of people are like, oh, it's a legal practice. You're not teaching that. I don't know. I know you're not teaching that to first graders. You're not teaching that to barely college students. But it's the praxy of critical theory. James Lindsay, who's not a believer, but at least has a brain that works, has a lot on this through sovereign nations and other things, interviews and whatnot. And he basically says, you're doing practice of it. 
right? Most people don't believe in materialistic evolution in the sense of digging in rocks and looking at fossils and dusting things and looking at starlight and compiling all this and based on these layers. No, 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 no. Most people just believe in it like, well, I used to be a monkey and now I'm a man. I'm better than I used to be. Well, that's all nonsense. It's utter nonsense. But unfortunately, for the last five, six decades, we've allowed that in the schools because we don't know our Bibles. It does not comport with scripture at all. If you believe that, you are incorrect. It's not in there. It's man's idea, and it is very, very new. Now, some people kind of believed in certain patchwork things, but like anything else, there's a progression. I'm reading a great book right now. I'll let you know when I'm done with it. Um, it is very worth the read, for sure. It's very scholarly, but readable. These leftists do this, too. Ed Litton, I would, I would count in that, where it's like, there's this heinous thing I did, and he was already disqualified beforehand with his wife co-preaching with him, having weird views of the Trinity and other things. And he doesn't admit any of this. And that's what the elites do. Politicians do this all the time. They're wrong. They're flat wrong. And it's like, oh. And yet other things where you're wrong or you're not wrong, excuse me, you're not wrong. People apologize. You know, some guy accidentally, you know, was quoting somebody who said the N-word 15 years ago and people lambast him. I'm really sorry. I just, oh, I just, I just, wow. I was just, a, and you know, they're just groveling at the feet of the leftists who are, you know, standing there with the keys to social media. Shut up. Who cares? Why don't you apologize for something you actually did? Right? Actual sin. Now, I'm not saying being racist isn't a sin. Of course it is. But just because you're, say, quote somebody, for example, again, don't use the N-word. Don't use any slander. Don't use any partiality. Don't use any of that. And ultimately, it's about partiality, not even about, quote unquote, racism. Again, because there's only one race. I have less melanin than my friend Jason, who has more. Great. I also have more hair than he does. He has less. So what? Like, so what? I'm a little younger than he is. We're both married. We've both got kids. We both love the Lord. We both love his word. Moving on. Like, how are we not reconciled? And that's what's so silly with the SBC stuff. Well, I guess more racial reconciliation. So here's the trick. And this is why I don't believe the ERLC, and in particular Ed Litton and Fred Luter and all these other guys. Why? Well, because they have three melanated plus and two less melanated people. Litton and the ERLC guy, and then Luter, this lady, and this other guy, pastor in Chicago. Now, I understand it's a small panel. However, they could have made it a bigger panel. They also could have had somebody else. And you might be thinking, well, are there no other elected officials in the SBC, the higher ups that are uh, black, more melanin? I'm glad you asked that. Yeah, there is. In fact, the first vice president, there's two vice presidents. There's a president, Lytton, the first vice president and second vice president. Second vice president's Hispanic. He's got, he uh, is part of a Spanish ministry and this and this and this. The first vice president is Lee Brandt, PhD as well, and he's black. But was he invited? According to Lee Brandt, he wasn't. He wasn't invited to the ERLC racial reconciliation. So if that's true, which I'm going to believe that that's true, because Ed Litton and others don't have a good track record, sadly, but that's just what it is. I don't have any reason to not believe Lee Brandt. He's part of the Conservative Baptist Network, though, which is CBN for short, which was formed after Resolution 9 in 2019, where they're talking about critical theory being an analytical tool, critical race theory in particular, and all these things, and we need to learn from experience and blah, 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 blah. Now, our experience does influence who we are, but it's not everything we are, especially as Christians. You are a follower of Christ. You are have been changed. You are a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. Does that not matter to these people? No, it doesn't. And I would argue it doesn't matter based on their actions, based on what they say. Now they want to say, oh yeah, this and that, blah, blah, blah. But you can even hear it. And I want to do this <clears throat> video and I hope it works out with, with uh, two guys and a gal. <clears throat> I want to kind of mimic what the ERL, ERLC was doing. But I'll play both Litton and the other guy. I don't know. They don't invite Lee Brand. Why? I thought you were wanting a ra racial reconciliation. Isn't this great? And in fact, in this uh, in this video, it's like 55 minutes, an hour long, Fred Luter is like, yeah, and we got this guy and this guy. And they don't even mention Lee Brand. They don't even mention him. Because one of the guys of Ronnie Floyd, who is a different 
He's the CEO of the executive committee. I won't bore you with all the details, but he stepped down recently, an older kind of um, conservative resurgence from 30, 40 years ago guy. He's kind of a holdover and he was okay, I think, but he stepped down because there's a lot of scandal in the, in the executive community. It's like the board of people that appoint other people because there's, it's kind of a hierarchy, but we're still independent churches. Anyway, it's still higher. Oh, you can't get away from hierarchy. You just can't. They don't invite Lee Brand. They don't even mention his name. That's heinous, guys. Fred Luter knows he exists. They're literally ignoring him, just like politicians do, especially leftist politicians, who just pretend like that doesn't exist. We don't have a problem at the southern border. We don't have this thing. We don't have that thing. Oh, look at Ukraine. Oh, over here, Russia. Russia's bad. What about China? What about Taiwan? That whole problem. What about North Korea and their antics? What about stuff that's happening at home? What about gas prices going through the roof? What about people not working? What about handing money out to people and encouraging them not to work? What about the murder of the unborn? Well, no, that's not, that's not really a problem. These guys in the SBC do it too, and it's shameful. It really is because they're not being honest. Oh, we want to reconcile. And you don't even invite the one black elected official who was elected by the messengers. I was a messenger. I was there in Nashville in 2021. But it's because I have a hunch because Lee Brand is part of the conservative Baptist network. He's pushing back and saying, you don't need this nonsense. You don't need critical theory, intersectionality. You don't need, you know, short term wokeism. You don't need it. It's divisive. It's wrong. It's worldly. It's unnecessary. And yet, you know, they think it is. Now, they're not going to say that. Nobody teaches critical race theory, except for they do. Again, you're lying. You're literally lying, man. Curtis Woods did at Southern Seminary. He's not there anymore. Jarvis Williams did and, as far as I know, does. Matt Hall also did and does. At least did. Uh, Walter Strickland at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary also teaches critical theory, critical race theory in particular. Don't say it's not being taught. And please, again, I know my SBC friends and those who are just non-denominational, whatever. I know most of my audience is believers, not everybody. This is more of an intramural thing in one sense, but it still has implications from the culture and the culture is affected deeply by the church. So even if you're not a Christian, you should still care about this because integrity matters. Fidelity matters. 40, 50 years ago, the same thing. Now I've heard the stories. I don't, I've not witnessed it myself, but I'll take it on, uh, on faith <clears throat> that the liberals as the conservatives called them, and the liberals called themselves the moderates, and we were called the fundamentalists, or Bible worshipers, bibliolatrists, you know, worshiping the Bible. We're not worshiping the Bible, we're worshiping the author behind the Bible, but anyway. They said when they were teaching about, you know, uh, uh, liberation uh, theology from James Cone and others, and that's being taught again, by the way, by Strickland and, and Williams, and at least talked about. They said, like these guys are now, we're just teaching about liberal Christianity. We're just teaching about it. And Al Mohler, the president of Southern, who I still really admire, and he's really had a lot of missteps over the years, recently especially. We're just teaching about it. That's literally the same stuff. And in fact, I believe I heard this story from Moeller's mouth more than once because I was on campus at Southern Seminary for several years. Heard him talk a lot, different things, different times. Saying, this is what the moderates, quote unquote, the liberals did. Oh, we we're just teaching about it. Donors, don't worry about it. Trustees, don't worry about it. Parents, we're just teaching about liberty. We're just teaching about how people don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah, that he was just a good man or that he wasn't born of a virgin. Or that he didn't actually die a sacrificial death. Or that, you know, the crucifixion, not really, but it is, but isn't, cosmic child abuse. Blah, 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 blah. Typical drivel from the left. We're just teaching about it, though. But here's the thing, they weren't. Southern Seminary was easily the most radically liberal uh, seminary of all six seminaries. They were all liberal. Southwestern was the best one, apparently, in the 80s and 90s. But they were all liberal. They were all bad. So a lot of times you'll see guys, you know, they used to go to Southwestern and whatever. I'm not going to get into all resumes. But 
Southern was the worst, easily the worst. Southeastern was really bad too. Well, they're trending back in those directions, but with the new things. Because here's the thing, the enemy always has something new. And also, <laughs> also, people who are on one side don't ever think they're on the other side. But they stormed the castle, the conservatives, 40, 50 years ago. It started. And it really took root 30 years ago. And they won the castle. And the, the people left, started the Conservative Baptist Fellowship, CBF, I believe it's called. Very liberal, you know, women, preachers, pastors, LGBT stuff, killing babies, the whole thing, right? Oh, it's all about Jesus and, you know, whatever, except for we don't actually love the Word of God. We just love some idolatry, idolized Jesus Jesus that isn't in the Bible. Now, Moeller and everybody else, Lytton, they're all in the castle, right? Luter and, and, and Adam Greenway, who's the president of Southwestern, and, and the, uh, Danny Aiken, who's Southeastern. We're all conservative. We're all, you know, we all believe the Bible, but you don't act like it, gentlemen. You don't act like it. And when you are confronted and you have maybe it was a misstep, maybe you thought it was something it wasn't, maybe you weren't as informed as you should be, whatever, but then you have to admit it. And that's the problem. Nobody's scarcely admitted it. Not that I know of. Yeah, I was wrong about critical theory. I completely misunderstood that altogether. What are we supposed to think? Right? What are we supposed to, I mean, somebody who comes to Christ and they're a drug addict and then they're still, I mean, remember this story, Russell Moore actually told it in a class, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt, I guess. But he was talking about a guy who was uh, a former drug addict and he came to Christ and the guy was still doing drugs. And I believe it was Russell Moore who was talking to him about it. He was like, hey man, what are you doing? He's like, well, oh, Jesus doesn't want me to do drugs. Okay, got it. Now, sometimes you're just so ignorant of right and wrong because you've hardened your heart. That's what it is. You've hardened your heart from sin. You're not coming out hard, but you're rather hardening your heart. Why are we talking about that with, why does Jesus say that? Don't harden your hearts. Don't harden your hearts. Be like a child. Have a tender heart. Anyway, and then he's, he's still doing it somewhat, and he gets confronted again. It's like, well, wh I thought we were, he's like, well, you know, the women I'm sleeping with, the hookers, they have the drugs. And it's like, well, don't sleep with hookers. Oh, okay. Right. Like God meets you where you are, not where you should be. I'm not condoning hookers or drugs, right? At all. But some people, I love Jesus. Oh, I'm a sinner. But they don't, they have to have their whole world reoriented. Unfortunately, most of the leadership has been Christian for years. And they should know these things. They're studied, they're articulate. They have doctors of ministry degree and a demon and a PhD and so many other things. And so when they talk about racial reconciliation, Lytton and these other guys, and they don't even they don't invite Lee Brand, they don't even mention his name. And yet looters praising, oh, praise God, this is just outstanding. It's just unbelievable. It's just so encouraging that we have this guy and this guy. The guy who was, took over for Ronnie Floyd. I might have rabbit trailed there earlier. And, oh yeah, he's he's black, blah, blah, blah. And he's the interim guy. What about Lee Brand? He's the first vice president. He's basically Kamala Harris, but in the SBC. Isn't that a big deal? Nah. He's a conservative, though. He's part of the CBN. I hope you found this helpful. I really do. Uh, went a little longer than I thought it would. <laughs> I probably said earlier that it was going to be short. I don't know what that means when I say that. Anyway, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for spending, spending some time with me. I know you got to be doing probably 10 other things or could be, uh, but it, I do deeply appreciate it. Go ahead and like and comment uh, if you found this helpful and share it, please. That would be wonderful too. So again, I'm helping you be against the world, but for the world's sake. Contramundum, promundum. Until next time, we'll see you.